The high priest once a year would go into the Holy of Holies. Once a year. Not without blood. Which he offered for the people's sins committed in ignorance. He would go beyond the veil. And that veil was a place that separated people from God. And only the high priest would go in there. And he would offer blood for the people's sins committed in ignorance. His and the people's committed in ignorance. But when he came out of that place, he still had condemnation. Because the way into the Holy of Holies in heaven wasn't there yet. That was only symbolic for this. But when Jesus died, he entered into the Holy of Holies. Not with the blood of bulls and goats. But with the holy spotless blood. Of Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain, one that never sinned before. And he laid blood on the mercy seat in heaven, which constantly cries out, Mercy for you. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. But Satan, guilty. Guilty. Condemned. Guilty. Ashamed. Ashamed and guilty. Which makes you keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and hating it. Looking in the mirror and saying, ah, I can't believe this. Then he wants you to read Romans 7 and think it's normal. It's not normal. Romans 7 is somebody that's trying to do it in their own strength but doesn't understand the cross. So Jesus says it's finished. That veil that separated man from God tore from the top to the bottom. And all of a sudden, because God wanted relationship with his kids. He didn't want a high priest here trying to represent him. He wanted a relationship with his kids. And he knew by sending Jesus to do what he did, you could be right with God. You could have right standing with God. So Jesus goes into the depths of the earth, says that he descended. Led captivity captive. My Bible says that he went into the depths. And he paid for the sin of mankind. But on the third day, nobody... Nobody died perfect and holy. Nobody was holy yet became sin. Nobody. <laughs> what kind of king would die for you? What kind of king would die for you so that you could live? What kind of king would leave heaven to come here to die for you so that you could live? Come on, man. It's like way better than an Easter story. So Jesus pays for the sin of mankind. The third day, the great Holy Ghost. He comes down into the depths. Oh, I'd love to see what that looked like. Man, that would be awesome. Darkness, the devil. All of a sudden. Guaranteed, that's a movie. The Holy Ghost with some keys in his hand. He says, come on. You did it. Let's get out of here. Keys to hell, death, and the grave. He hands to the Son. Let's go. <laughs> hell is in a big cover-up to try to cover their tracks and make it look like it's not that much. It's not that deep. It's not that. It's not that true. It can't be that simple. Yet my Bible and yours. I was going to go there. Second Corinthians eleven three says this. I fear. Lest as Satan deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds might get corrupted and be taken away from the simplicity that's in the Christ. He's trying to corrupt you right here, twist you up right here, make it hard, make you have to jump through hoops, make it more than that and harder than that. Man, it's simpler. It's simple. That's why Jesus said, unless you become like a little kid, you'll never enter. You'll never see. A little kid just trusts, man. My little three-year-old, I come in the door, ah! she falls down, Dang. kids just trust, they're just little, they don't know how not to, they have to be taught not to, they have to be taught not to. In the Bible, we come to Jesus and we trust that God's our Father, we read the Word, we ask the Holy Spirit to make it alive and real in us. That day Jesus ascends, he comes out of the depths of hell. And that day Mary is there at the tomb. She goes there with the women because they're going to go and anoint the body. They go and the stones roll away and they freak out. Wah! They run back to the house and they get John and Peter. They said, he took the Lord. No way. And they run to the tomb. They get there and they find he's not there. 
And John won't go in, but Peter runs right in, man. What? It says they believe. They walked out. They left, and Mary's there weeping. She sees angels. Oh, crazy. He's not here. He's risen. But she turns around. She sees somebody, and she supposes it's a gardener. I love this part right here. This is amazing. This blows me away. This, this rocked my world. See, because I grew up, and my dad wasn't there, my mom wasn't there, and I based my life on whether my parents were there or not. We do that, whether how our mom and our dad and how our family and how this, and we base ourselves, and we base, sometimes we base our life, and because the souls of a parent might not be there where it needs to be, but we base our life as the reflection of that, and we live in that identity. But when we see this part right here, see, Mary said, where did you put him? Tell me where they put the body. Just tell me. And he says, Mary. And Mary immediately knows that voice. She says, Master, teacher, Rabboni. She tries to cling to Jesus. And Jesus says, don't cling to me. I haven't yet ascended to the Father. Because he had some blood to put on the mercy seat. He, she says, he says, go and tell the disciples that I'm ascending to my father and your father. That day, God became Jehovah Father. Listen, he was God, he was the Almighty, he was Jehovah, he was this, but that day, God became our father. What does that mean? That means that my identity doesn't come from my natural dad anymore. My identity comes from my heavenly father. And if you see that and you look in the mirror, you'll be like, Oh, it'll, it'll melt your heart forever. Then you can look at your dad that messed up and say, I forgive you. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Because my dad wasn't there for me. My mom put me in a home. Do you remember all that junk? They did all that stuff. When I came out of the boys' home, I mean, when I came out of the teen challenge, first person I called was my mom. Mom, I'm not mad at you anymore. She said, why? I said, because I know Jesus. She said, well, okay. She didn't understand. I said, no, really, I'm serious. My dad, dad, I'm not mad at you anymore. Why? It's because of Jesus. Okay. So what? He wasn't a believer. I was so clean. God became my dad. Jesus said, go and tell the disciples that I'm ascending to my father and your father. To my God and your God. So Jesus... For 40 days, in and amongst the disciples, talking to them, things pertaining to the kingdom of God. But 40 days later, Jesus is with them. And he says, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Because they want him to take by force. He says, it's not for, your, for you to know the times or seasons. Only the Father knows. But you go and wait for the promise of the Father. Now, he had already breathed on them when he came in the room when they were hiding. The first time he saw them, he said, Ah, receive the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit, which was a born-again experience. God, in the beginning, breathed into dirt and it jumped up a man. Men turned their back on God, turned away from God, and fell. Jesus was redeeming that which was lost. But now, he says, you go and wait for the promise. Go to Jerusalem and wait. And up. angels are like, why do you look up in the clouds? He's going to come back the same way. Go and do what he said. So they go and wait. And on that day, they saw heaven for 10 days. And on the 50th day, the day of Pentecost, all the spirit came upon him and changed Peter forever. The one that denied Jesus became one of the greatest apostles. That one has got possessed by his right standing with God. Righteousness is this. Jesus paid the price to make you right with God. You are right with God because he paid the price. He did it. There's no way you could. So you believe 
the reality of right standing with God because he said yes to you as a daughter, as a son, as a child, and he will never say no to you, ever. Right standing with the king. You're right with God. If God is for you, who can be against you? If he is really greater than you, than he that's in the world, what's stopping you? I can promise you this. After we pray tonight, tonight when you look in the mirror, you are going to weep. Because you are going to finally see what God sees. <sighs> I promise you. Because I know what my dad's saying. It's going to happen. 